Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Oh, shit. Hello. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That was a That's sleepy cool. little Christmas slumber clap that we got in. A slumber clap? A sleepy little slumber clap. Slumber clap. Eat? I'm not sleepy. How was Christmas, oh. gentlemen? I think Jared's was really good. <laughs> what? <Well, I> mean, <laughs> What? Why? Why is that? Can we can we tell the can we tell the audience? So you won the bet, Jared, and I had to make I a did. video praising your love and your girlfriend and how much I was wrong, which I did. Did you appreciate you did. the video? I did. Yeah. I very, very much so appreciated it. I combed and through I, I six months of photos. Yes, yeah, you did. Yeah. I, I've never laughed that hard at, at Evan's comment than I have at any comment <laughs> in Instagram history. What was I, it? I didn't want to write how funny it was in case your girlfriend was reading it, and then it would it, then it would have been like, oh my god, these guys are the worst humans on the planet. Ah, uh, whatever, you know. I I tell her it's for entertainment. Who cares? It's just, <laughs> just Instagram. What did well, you two you know, lovebirds you do? Know, you know, if I had my way, I really wanted that group photo uh, of me, yes. Caitlin, the kids, Heather, and and her yes. all at your house for Thanksgiving. I wanted yes. that picture. Oh, I did too. That would have been so good. I was good. the one that suggested it. I asked if you could make it happen. And you said, no, I think it might be bad for yeah, like, my family. Yeah, JT says he wants no, it. No, I didn't say it would be bad for The second two of them family. get even remotely close, he shuts down. I, I just made that last part up. But yeah, he said, well, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try. And it didn't happen. And I don't know why. Caitlin would be down for it. Did you hang out with all, all three of them on Christmas? <laughs> Obviously. Uh, Heather, Maybe. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, I, I whoa, 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 back the truck up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Santa's going to back his sleigh up just to just a, a couple houses back. You hung out with Heather on Christmas? No, this we're talking about Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Oh, all right. I, Heather, Heather went to she, Florida. Heather went back, you know, to to the state of Florida where, where your she, parents live. Did she did she yeah. see your parents? No, she's in a different, different. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if she went out there for Christmas. I wouldn't either because they seem to really take a shine to her. Yeah, they, they definitely well, his, did. His parents take a shine to just about anyone that is one of Jared's friends that they can place in, in, instead of Jared. Right? Where they're like, <laughs> this seems to be a person around the age of my child. <laughs> this is a good child avatar. <laughs> yeah, I got this. It's a child avatar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought it was weird that your mom started calling me Jared and was kissing me on the while she was tucking the, you into bed. Yeah, but the, the the at forty years old, I do not need a kiss on the lips. <laughs> that's a that's oh, a little God, bit much. And by your mom me. and dad. <laughs> let's just say you know and they kept they kept asking if you were going to be lonely if you wanted to sleep in the room <laughs> are you are you going to have nightmares and i was like no i just don't see why we all need to be in the same bed it's just weird. It's weird. has your dad Not... ever ever tried to give you a kiss on the lips at an at an older no. age evan god no yeah. I, uh, yes. I, no. <laughs> when, when's the age you stop kissing your son on the mouth? What do you think it is? I Jared? don't even kiss my kids on the mouth. Like I, like who does that? Your, your kid. Now that's that's a that's a health benefit for your children because I know where your mouth is. Sometimes <laughs> you absolutely should not kiss your children whatsoever. <laughs> I would I would argue against you scrubbing up before touching your children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Like going to like I've got a like, lot. Like of... wash up to the elbows. A lot of you know pond I mean? scum, yeah. a lot of toilet sandwiches. Okay. Yeah, because I've, I've been over to I've been over to grown up houses. Since I had myself a quality toilet sandwich. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> oh, hasn't, hasn't been long enough. I've been over to people's houses where they're still kissing, you know, their adult parents on the mouth, and I'm like, all right, oh, shut the fuck shut up, up. Oh, get out of here. It's it's That's a pack a thing. You know, you call it, them out right now. Yeah, by name. <laughs> it's it's a peck and it's it's longer a it's longer movement. than a second where you're like, "Oh, all right, no, you're still don't. doing that." They seriously? Yeah. That's just weird, man. Greek it's families. Greek I mean, families. Yeah, it's it's other big. other cults Italians fucking kiss uncomfortably long their family. Yeah, but Nobody wants to adopt any cultural norm from the fucking Italians. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> 
Come on. <laughs> We're talking about people that we want to be, you know? Like, <laughs> would you, would you do want, this Christmas? Who do we want to be? <laughs> would you do this Christmas, Evan? You, this was your first Christmas in San Antonio with, with the whole fam. How was it? Well, it's weird. It's it's one of the first Christmases I've had outside of Iraq where it was warm. So it was uncomfortably warm. It was like seventy five degrees. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Was it really? It was humid. Yeah, yeah, it was humid. It was it was warm. And you want to get into Christmas, you know? You want to get I into don't. Christmas. I don't. I do. I I, I, I think it's great yeah. for the kids. Like. So you same. Know, the kids yeah. Go through the whole thing where you know they open up their presents. And we tell them to go do whatever they do as children unsupervised with their toys while we go and do other things. Um, no, we, we wanted to get into it, but it was, it was actually kind of difficult because it always feels right now, and it's winter here, but it yeah. feels like spring. So I'm in like spring cleaning mode, and I've been in like spring cleaning mode f- forever since it, it turned fall, right? Yeah. Um. So my wife and I, we did the whole unwrapped all the presents. My dad was in town. Um, Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want you to tell Ross the story of, of him going off about Richard's van habits. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> So Ross, Ross, his dad comes to town for Christmas, but of course shows up to the office and is just working. Like, but... Not like working to, that's really helping anybody, but just <laughs> supervision. <laughs> yeah, he's, granddad is adult he's, supervision. Yeah. He's <laughs> supervising the building. <laughs> yeah, my dad has this problem where he'll he'll start going through and organizing things that don't necessarily need to be organized. And and granted, mm. he's a very he's a very passionate man. You know, he wants things to be a specific way. I respect that about him. So we have a van. Black Rifle Coffee has this this Ford van that we we drive around in. He's like, Richard Ryan thinks this goddamn van is his personal crash up derby car. It's fucking dents all over, and it. it's gonna take like fifteen thousand dollars. Ford gave me this thing, and I'm like, Dad. I don't give a fuck about whatever <laughs> noise is coming out of your head right now. <laughs> Wow, you want Richard Ryan just well, out there crashing up, turbies fucking fair, running into this Ross, thing. This van, like, they've ran it into a parking garage, so the top is dent, the side is fucking dented <laughs> up. Like, So, yeah, the van is to fucked To be fair, up. it is a, a brand new, like, Ford Transit that's got, like, 15,000 miles on it, and it does look like a crash derby vehicle. To be fair. To be fair. It's but I like that he completely yeah. fucking blamed truck. you. He, yeah, it, Richard Ryan is treating this as his own West Virginia. Like just a <laughs> fucking crack can. I like how he's trolling and, me because because I've drove the car probably maybe like five fucking miles in Las Vegas. The rest of the time it's been Malcolm or Frank. So I'll take the heat on it. I like it. <laughs> uh, he caught. Well, well, no, it gets better, Ross. So like four years or three years ago, we'll, we'll we'll be conservative. Three years ago, Evan sells his old Volvo to the company as just a company car for anybody that comes in town to use. It's just an old Volvo. Like that was last somebody, year. Somebody somebody though- has keys, you know, Frank keeps the keys to it. We never know where it is half the time. I mean, fucking Frank's using it, Malcolm's using it. Who cares about the fucking yeah, Volvo? So this Volvo, I mean, <laughs> let me give you let me give you some background on this Volvo. <laughs> I bought this car you had to fly to Washington to get it, didn't you? Well, no, I was flying to Washington to do uh, something. I was I was researching. I was with you. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. we were we were up there together for for something. I forget exactly what it was, but I was in Washington for like a month. I forget what we were doing up there. Um, and then so I buy this Volvo, like straight up for eight thousand dollars, and it has a hundred plus thousand miles on it. It was just a car. That we needed. It was like oh, we were in Washington. We we're going to be there for the next month. Like- Plus, we needed a car, so it was like, let's just buy it here. We'll drive it back. Not a big deal. Uh, you know what it was? It was uh, I was I was selling my condo and yeah, a bunch yeah, of other stuff yeah. in Seattle. So, so I buy this car. We don't have a family vehicle at that time, so it's eight thousand dollars, like hundred plus thousand miles on it. It's totally fine. It's a winner, winner. 
Winner, winner, I mean, man. now he doesn't have to borrow Jeff's, you know, one of four Dodge Caravans. Yeah, one right. of four of Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Kirkham. Who knows? 1987 Dodge Caravan. Junker. Like our, our vehicle situation was dire. Like, I was driving around <laughs> a van that was not safe in any situation we had purchased from the university. <laughs> and it was no shit five hundred dollars. That's what I was. That's my daily driver. Solid. So wow, um, my and we had sold all our vehicles because we needed to fund the company. So we had sold anything and everything that was a bill in our lives that we could eliminate. And we were trying to downsize, but I needed a car that we could just you know get around in, right? Something that was safe. And you guys get it, yeah. Um, so we buy this Volvo. We drive it back. We've had it for now four years in mm-hmm. the family. Last year, I sold it to the company as a company vehicle, exactly for what Jared said, was something that people, when they were in town, they could drive, employees, whomever, right? We mm-hmm. always needed an extra car. The company bought it back for me for whatever, five grand or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Evidently, this Frank is took like- the keys. Yeah. yeah, yeah evidently, this is like a collector's item, according to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> it's nice. It's a nice Volvo. Richard nice Ryan, Volvo. you are a dad. Well, no, when when he came up to you to start talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like <laughs> So my dad starts going off on this Volvo and he's like, God damn, we gotta have these, you know, motor mounts and we gotta replace the AC <laughs> and then the windows are all dirty and we gotta get this thing washed and and I'm like, Okay, Dad. So I'm going to explain to you the hierarchy of Evan's cares and up here is like where the business is. And then, you know, above that is where my children are. And, and then as we start to decline down here, I'm like, so right here is where the, the, where I stop giving a fuck down here is where like the, the, the gross population of the African moths are like, (laughs) and then (laughs) below that is where the Volvo sits. <laughs> <laughs> and no, Ross, he's actually saying this to his dad. I, so he will, he will routinely get his dad locked into a conversation where he drags the punchline out, essentially telling him that he doesn't give a fuck what he's talking about. <laughs> so like, his dad is intently listening to this list of things yeah. that Evan's listing out, saying, okay, yeah, yeah, the African, the population of the African moth is more important to me about that than that yeah. fucking Volvo right now i care more about the indigenous cicada population in south africa than i do that volvo i could give a fuck about that volvo like two flying chairs (laughs) richard ryan could come back and go i filled the volvo with tannerite i blew it up on the range and i didn't film it and i would say wow was it cool that's yeah. about where I would live. That's what, almost what you asked to do, have done to the Subi. Yeah, the Subi burnt down on the side of the road. We had oh, another man. car. So, so listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. So Evan, Evan got this Subaru. And how much was it? 500 bucks? 500 bucks. If, if, like, and so I would drive that whenever I came out to Salt Lake. And in the peak of fucking winter, peak of winter, like it takes what? Like 30 minutes for the heat to defrost the windshield after you've already scraped it from the snow and everything. I mean, this thing <laughs> it, it barely ran. Windshield wipers didn't work. Lights, half the time, there were like electrical issues where the radio would cut on and off and just go straight full volume <laughs> and shit. Hey, that was a great deal, Richard Ryan. First it was a foremost. great deal. But so, <laughs> who deal. was driving it when that happened? Not safe Frank. to drive in any circumstance. <laughs> it was Frank. <laughs> That was Frank. He was yeah. driving it. That is that was that was a very unsafe vehicle. It's reeked of gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> One of the the, pass, the driver's side rear floor pan was out. It was like rusted completely yeah. through. So there was a, a a floor mat covering this hole in the in <laughs> the car. <laughs> yeah. Car. So we've had some incredible vehicles here at Black Rifle mm. Coffee. I mean, it caught a, fire. It, it did catch fire, and it caught fire on the interstate, yeah. and it burnt to, to the, the ground. ground on the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, my dad called that me. He's like, r- he's like in it. He's like, man, you never guessed this. This this Subaru is going to cost us so much money. And starts yelling about me the Subaru, and I was like. 
can you just leave it there? Like, can you just like pick up Frank and just drive away? <laughs> like, just well, drive no. away. You remember the day prior to this, Frank got stranded on his way back from Ogden, and they had to tow him back That's in the said. Subaru. The tow, so the the tow was going to be more than the car. He yeah. fucking caught fire on the freeway. Yeah. yeah what do you do so, in a situation like that? Do you just leave it on the side of the road, Evan? What'd you do? <laughs> no, we we had it towed out to. Uh, I don't know, a place where you, you tow scrap vehicles and uh, we sold it for scrap. So we bought it for 500 bucks and I think we sold it for 100 or something like that. We drove, it, we drove it for almost like killed six months. months. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it probably almost killed multiple people because <laughs> yeah. I'm sure... Brakes barely worked. They didn't work. Yeah. That was <laughs> an illusion. So, so I use... The funny thing is like... It was so just, uh, the brakes actually didn't work, so I had to e-brake in the middle of winter to be yeah. able to come to a stop. So I'm like drifting down the fucking street. Well, to be s- fair, the axles were so rusted they didn't spin loosely. So like, if you just came off the gas, you could just you it was just great. close to a stop. It was great. The e-brake light came on immediately thereafter and never yeah. worked since. Well, and to be fair, I bought that car specifically for killing Richard. Richard. Yes, yeah. so, <laughs> Richard. Uh, uh, no, this this is you Subaru yeah, over here. Take it. Richard, we got this you the Subaru, Subaru, Richard. Yes. It's great. Here, sign this. Yes, Richard. <laughs> Get in the Subaru. <laughs> I love buying old cars and shit off of like Craigslist and all, and all that shit. Yeah. We've had to do it for production a bunch of times. Um, I'm sure you enjoy that car yeah. as much as you made fun of yeah. it. Yeah, I wh- think that's where we got all our Priuses. I yeah. need to I purchase an El Camino. You did? Yeah, you you do, yeah. Because yeah, you, you think... look like an El Camino driver. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I yeah, agree. See that. Yeah, everybody thinks this place is like a like it's been like rock star type stuff and it's You got that Rolls Royce ghost. So <laughs> not the case. We're talking about five hundred dollar Subarus <laughs> that reek of gasoline that are clearly unsafe to drive anywhere. But we like Bad. a challenge. Bad Astro vans that I bought from the university for another five hundred bucks. <laughs> Volvo's the, the Volvo was the nicest car in the parking lot. It is lot nice for the longest time, and that car was eight thousand dollars. Like that, that, that to me should should say this is this has been super rock star, fellas. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it helps but, you appreciate things more. Yeah, it so, really does. So, speaking of flaming uh, piles of shit, um, <laughs> dumpster fires. <laughs> may I speak about? A Netflix movie that I watched recently, uh, Bird Box. Please do that. Please so Bird do. Bird Box is literally just a box of shit <laughs> packaged up <laughs> as a movie <laughs> that explodes in your fucking face <laughs> when you start to watch it, and you literally will reek like diarrhea as you watch this flaming trash bin of, of shit. diarrhea shit here's the thing <laughs> I, I, i'm halfway through this film right now i we stopped it um because we have a newborn and uh i'm gonna watch the rest of it tonight i enjoyed the first half but i don't know the end no, some sandra no, bullet it's shit is it, it is really shit. it is it is shit, shit. i wouldn't watch it Ross. it is the shit that explodes that you have to clean out of your eyes with an eyedropper and some high pressure fucking water. You're gonna finish the movie and you're not gonna know any more than you do right now at this point. Oh, uh, you fuckers! It is, it is so bad. In, it is so fucking bad. I I can't even Who tell you where. Who wrote this shit? It, it, they didn't write it. I I literally think they they outsourced a script to India to to India or the Congo (laughs) where people didn't know how to write. And they're just like, just write us some shit. Just write a movie. (laughs) It's for (laughs) for Sandra Bullock. It's fine. Just write something. Yeah. I literally want you to take this box of human shit and then put that into a movie. Just there you go. Write that. And then there you go. There's no character development. There's no story arc. The fucking premise of it is so stupid. The last, but, but and then, the last two days on Twitter, this has been the not like number five in between one and five is like the top trending topic. This movie, I've everybody's seen talking about this people movie, claiming that they're going to name their children boy or girl. Yeah, but this is, but it's it's the dumbest crap I've <laughs> ever seen. Like, I don't know why people are fucking raving like, about it. It's shit. You, you can't. And I'm just going to go into it. I'm going to ruin it for some people because it's so it. it's so bad. Spoiler alert. <clears throat> so fucking bad. So this thing, whatever it is, this entity comes in through your eyes and it makes you commit suicide, whatever it is. Right. Okay. 
but you got me at the first section of it because I was like, oh, this this is interesting. It's 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 incredibly it's violent. Sure, it's yeah. it opens up and you're like, you got me. It opens up. Same, you yeah. Got me. Yeah. Then it keeps going, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna get in the car and black out the windows because if I don't see whatever it is, then it can't infect me. Yeah. Okay. So they black out the cars to their SUV or the windows. The Jeep to the, Cherokee. To the they Jeep can't Cherokee. wear sunglasses. <clears throat> No, Richard, you can't see any of it. Right? You can't but, even but, watch it through a video camera. You can't watch it through a video camera. You can't, you can't wear, you, you got these like blindfolds or you can cover a blanket over your eyes or whatever, but you can leave the light coming in through the windows, but it can't come into your house. Yeah, it, it can't it come just, into the house. It can't come into your house. It's so fucking stupid. It's got weird rules. Yeah, it's got it's super got really weird, weird rules, rules where, yeah. where, what is this, like a vampire? It's got to ask for permission. I don't <laughs> fucking know, but it can't come into your house. But It, it whispers sometimes. Yeah. And it, and it blows weird. the leaves. It blows the leaves, and then yeah. all of a sudden you look up, and then you're infected or whatever. It's yeah. so stupid. So, anyway, they black out the, 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 the windows to their Cherokee, and they're driving on the road, like completely blacked out. And they're using a GPS, GPS. navigator yeah. nice. to, to drive on the street. Which is oh, impossible. By the way, which is completely impossible. Yeah, if it was Apple Maps, they'd be fucked. Yeah, they're fucked. Like, <laughs> they would be on the other side of town even if they did get that thing to work. <laughs> yeah, right. But they're driving by navigation. Oh, by the way. And the sensors. And the, the sensors, sensors. Like, it's going beep, 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 beep. Well, they, don't, they only work when it's in reverse anyway, right? They don't have fucking sensors to your yeah. car. And there's trash and people and everything around the... Bodies. It's just so yeah. stupid. It really it's like, dumb. it will, will not work. Then the worst thing was is Sandra Bullock gets these two kids in this boat. And it's a no shit Steel white water, fucking, yeah. white water river with no life jackets, with... In a in a, like a dinghy that she's rowing, nice. and they're on the bo- they're on the river, this white water, blindfolded, for two days straight without life jackets, forty eight hours, and the only thing they hit was a truck that was pulled out into the river that capsized them, and then she she was able to grab all the kids with blindfolds on and all this other like crazy shit where you're like, dude, you can't be on a river for two days blindfolded rowing down a whitewater river. And she's like, okay, but hold on kids. We're going through some whitewater now. How's she know it's white? Oh my God. It's so stupid. It's just like, I was. <laughs> my wife and I were sitting there watching this and my wife was like, what the fuck are we watching? <laughs> this is so stupid. I don't even know how to like count the ways this is. Garbage so so at half. what point did you say we're so invested in this? I got to see how it ends. Yeah, yeah. Or this cut is, bait. Did, did you make is, it through the whole movie? I watch, yeah, this is how I watch movies like that, which is I fast forward through all of it. And <laughs> I, I just watch certain segments of it. So once you have a scene change, I'm like, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up. It takes me about 15 minutes. I can smoke through about an hour and a half movie. It makes no... <laughs> but I got it, right? <laughs> <laughs> there might be your character development through that, but... There is no character development because <laughs> the writing and acting is shit. Okay. So if it's we're Sandra gonna... Bullock. I mean, she's Academy, Academy Award winner, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's got to be some, well, something there, right? All I know is Netflix has, must have paid that woman. Oh, yeah. 20 eight, million. Eight, literally. Is she that what they tw- paid her? Yeah, she got 20. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Shut well, up. That's how much it costs for Sandra Bullock to make a diarrhea movie. Twenty million dollars. That's how much. That's yeah, how much. That's how much. Her everybody's reputation like costs. hailing this thing as it's like. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah every, everybody loves it, man. This has been the talk of the last two days. But that and then the. I don't know if you guys saw the trailer. Twenty nineteen. Yeah, the, the the trailer that dropped about an hour ago for uh, the new Black Mirror movie. I don't know if you guys are Black Mirror fans. Yeah. Oh, I am. Yeah, I want to see that. Dude, that movie drops tonight at midnight, and it's called. Oh shit. fuck! I'm staying up. Bandersnatch. Yeah, that's awesome. And like, um. It's fucking dope, man. It, it, that so just, wait, so is, is it, it's a movie, full not movie. a series. Correct. Um, so are they doing another season? They are. And the rumor okay. is that the, the, the entire season is going to drop the day afterwards. If that happens, <gasps> Shut up. you could just go ahead and write off the next three, three four days of my life. But, um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, but the movie drops tonight at midnight, and it's got shout outs to like past like characters and things in it. And uh, the internet melted down when that, when that came out today. Eastern, Eastern awesome. time? Or what do we... Yeah, what do we uh, it's usually Pacific for Netflix because they're, they're on the 
the West Coast, but um, yeah, yeah, it's called. If you want to watch the trailer, it's called Bandersnatch, and it's uh, that's the Black Mirror movie. The other one that everybody was going bug fuck over, which I've never seen anybody drop a trailer on Christmas Day, was Us, the new Jordan Peele movie. Did you guys see that? No. Mm -mm. Ooh, that looks creepy. So he did Get Out. This is his next thing. Yeah. And um, he, you remember that that old rap song, I Got Five on It? Yeah, yeah. The entire trailer song is that, but as it keeps going along, it slows down until it's all orchestra in the background. Um, and it's about a, this black family that appears to be going on vacation. And then the, these five other black family members are after them. They take off their mask and shit and you realize it's them. And then at the end of the trailer, it says our own worst enemy is us. And then do you have to kill yourself? I mean, it looks trippy as fuck. God damn it. What? It's another fucking bird box. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Get Out was was pretty good. I haven't seen Get Out. It's oh, it's good. great. Yeah, I enjoyed really? Get Out. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll watch anything with Tyler Perry in it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I watch all his movies. Yeah, yeah. Tyler Perry is, is nowhere near that, but I, so uh, I need to see Get Out, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Get Out is Get Out is really good, man. I think I think you'll dig it. Is your lady still in town? No, no, she Which one? Be- <laughs> Which one? Jared Juggle and three now. Well, the funny thing is I called him on Christmas and I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, just sitting with the girls opening presents. And I was like, oh, shit, they're getting along. And he was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, what are you talking about? It's like, you got all of them in one spot? All just, you're all just giving them presents? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, you got your harem. They're all getting along, man. That's all right. <laughs> Maybe like, no, the girl's dummy. And I was like, oh. All right. You should the, look into that polygamy. The hoe parade. <laughs> I know. He's got he's got like his uh he's got like a whole stringer of them, like fish. <laughs> he's just like like they're just dragging along on his boat as he drinks beer and listens to country music. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think string. Heather would be down for that. Oh man, and the El Camino, just like yeah, oh, yeah, the El Camino, yeah. but they're all riding in the back. Nobody rides in front. Yeah. That's for the dog. Hey man, <laughs> you joke, but JT's gonna buy an El Camino uh, tomorrow. You know I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see him. What color Camino. does it need to be? Brown. Wow, brown. Yeah, yeah. brown would be a nice color red, white, for you. Blue? Mm. I ah. was thinking more. I was thinking like yellow. You don't think like orange, like General Lee? It. Oh, you could do brown with yellow stripes. <laughs> Pinstripes are classy, bro. Yeah? They are classy. Yeah. Should I rhino line the bed? I think you're going to have to. Though. Yeah. The mess, those hose will, the mess those hose will create back there. <laughs> what, if I, what if I just zip tied a really hefty duty tarp to the bed? Yeah, well, that yeah. could double as a hot tub. Yeah. There you now go. We're talking. Yeah. I like this. That hashtag like this river life, dude. Yeah, you're going to have to line, yeah. rhino line the back of that. And then, look, you can fill I'm it gonna, up with I'm water. I'm glass form. pack it like, so it sounds like Uncle Buck's car. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Really you got like fucking a three do on it. The tree. You got like a three on the tree, which is one of those that shifts on the on the right here. It's not yeah. automatic. It's like one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> yeah. The thing of it is, is just buying that would expand your harem. I I guarantee it. You show up in places in an El Camino, people know you mean. I mean, business. if I if I buy an El Camino, I've got to get a sleeveless jean jacket, and I should just. Rock no hat from now on. Do you yeah, have? Yeah. Do you still have the 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 handlebar mustache? I do. Oh fuck! You were born having El Camino then, right? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. this is your best look, Jared. Let's face it. This is the best look you've ever I th- had. I think we found it. I think we yeah. found it. You get that mullet going a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you got to frill it. It's coming. You know. Yeah. Once you get that in in an El Camino, horse growth or horse growth hair for- hormones. So yeah, you get that hair growing a little faster. I bet you there's somebody out there who will do a BRCC custom Rhino line for you in the back of that El Camino too. Yeah, but it's just Rhino line. What do we need to? Eh, people are going to see it from above, Jared. Let's face it. I mean, when when you drive <laughs> into the office, it's going to be like, hey, because I, I saw yeah. a, I saw a picture. Of you guys, it looks like you guys have set off a bomb inside Black Rifle Coffee and are just completely gutting it. Is is that true, Evan? Yeah, yeah, we're in full demo on half of the building right now. We've got it. We have it completely gutted, and we'll start the rebuild process, I think, a uh, week after next. No all shit. Are, yeah, all our permits have been approved, and 
Ooh, I'm excited. It's going to be nice. Oh, Congratulations. Still toilets. Really nice. Still yeah, toilets back there. Still yeah. toilets. So we can take take deuces out in the open. That's where I've been going. Right? Yeah, open. he doesn't flush either. Been hoping. Been Why hoping don't you go seat me. to seat? Why don't you go toilet to toilet so you can oh, they look are. at the there's, other men? There's eight of them right there. Yeah, yeah right there. <laughs> Just <laughs> stare at each other I'm, while you go. I'm serious. Like I really want to eventually put one toilet above the other. Just just for the challenge. What? You know? Like, put it up on the wall. Like, so you and your buddy, you know, your buddy can be above you. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's enough, so there's enough clearance. That would be an interesting <laughs> scenario where we have, like, balcony seating toilets, and there's, like, 30 of them in the bathroom. It's like a yeah. spiral staircase yeah. that goes People up to like, the second one. The name, what the fuck? What the what the fuck are you guys doing in here? This is a, it's a, it's stadium toilet. <laughs> like, what are you watching? And then it's, you're just watching the, One guy. the trough. No, it's just a trough that faces uh, you. Faces you. Yes. So the people shitting can watch the people pissing yes. in a stadium. So they, they feel equal. Yeah. That's like pretty that. epic. I mean, I, like I just that. think having like, like, a, you know, rock climber, rock wall things up the wall with it, with it, a toilet. With enough clearance where if you're sitting on it, it's above me on right. my toilet. Yeah, you could theme them. You could have like a rope climb to a toilet. You could yeah. have the rock climb. I just mean, you know, and it just says if you're brave enough, you know? Right. That's, yeah, do you watch yeah. your ladies take a deuce? Let me ask you that, Jared. Is that, yeah. Is yeah, that something never. you... Yeah, totally. like, like, do you leave I've the never. door open or, or, or not? Never. No, okay. I've never seen a girl. I've never really? heard it. Evan takes a dump here with the door open. Either way. It's a that's power, a, power that, play. Yeah, that's a power move for It's me. a power that's move, how I establish. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's how I establish do- uh, dominance because <laughs> people come in, I look them right in the eye and tell them, "Hey, how's it hey, going? Hey, what's up? You're doing a good job. A good, oh, yeah. good job." <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like to stop them on their way to the the uh, urinal and talk to them while I'm in the middle of the act. <laughs> like stop them and like they'll try to look away, but they can't. I'm like, "Hey, look at me when I'm talking to you. It's disrespectful to look away." That's great. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a dominance thing. <laughs> that is, CEO, and then pulling CEO your pants down at a urinal. right there. Yeah, pulling yeah. your pants down a urinal all the way to the ground um, at a crowded <laughs> ball game is another power move as a man where you're like, fuck you, dude. I pulled my yeah. pants all the way down. I just, just pulled my dick out through the hole. Yeah. Uh, speaking and then of pull- just turn around to wash your hands with your pants still down. Oh, man. <laughs> there you go. Checkmates. But not just washing your hands, washing your dong, too. Like just <laughs> uncomfortably. <laughs> just yeah. soaping, I don't know where my hands have been today. You're soaping. <laughs> you're, you're rinsing. Like, <laughs> do, you, do that in an airport. Like, yeah, get out. In a busy get, Atlanta airport. Yeah, like. Get out like a big a big scrubber brush yeah and just like, put it like the, a back loop yeah up just like just, <laughs> you know, once you dry it you apply tanning yeah. tanning liquid <laughs> and then just stick it in the dyson as you go out <laughs> Yeah, you're you're hitting the you're hitting the fucking hand warmer that's just blowing down on it while you're drying out your that's tanning right. creamer. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just kinda, it's a process, my friends. It's a process. And then explain it to everybody in the bathroom as you're going through. Like, hey, have you tried this new bronzer from Walgreens? <laughs> really yeah. makes your dick a good color. Oh. I like to get a little bit of wreck to apply it. <laughs> that's the only way to do it. Anybody spot me a quick peek at a bee hole, real quick? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Got me with a peak. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. that one's dirty. You get lines if you do that. <laughs> oh man, if I saw that in, in in person, I would clap. I would slow clap the guy. <laughs> but like washing it out, like like their socks. You know when people have slept in the airport, yeah. you can tell they've had a rough yeah. night and they're just washing their right. shit in there. And you're like, right. oh man, I feel bad for you, you poor bastard. Somebody just Wrong. pulled their dick out. Yep, just laid it down on the sink. Was really just kind of beating it, just kind of. You know, smashing it in. You know what? This gives me an idea to a whole new game amongst us, Ross. Is now we should we should definitely be hiring people to intercept and fuck with us. Like if I if we were able to put that together yeah. while you were like going to the bathroom at a Chipotle and we hired somebody to be in there just fucking doing some weird shit <laughs> just yeah, to fuck with great. you. <laughs> just <laughs> we hey, we tried to get the video thing going again, but Matt on the first round of videos just absolutely housed oh, us again just God. houses everybody damn yeah. it dude that guy is the one best plan. he's the best yeah. at it man i don't he know I, I don't know how you can beat that when i got that video i watched it probably 15 times and laughed just as hard every single time yeah the music 
I, it's, it's really good. The music alone made that whole thing. It scored like a so John good. Williams film. Like you can't beat yeah. that. And uh, I, I give up, man. I bow down to him. He's the king of that shit. But He's these the other king. videos is the only thing we have left, Jared. I know. I know. So Matt and I had a great. Uh, I think it was Chris, the the twenty third. The yeah. night of the twenty third, we went out, and shot some axis. It's great. How'd you we guys great, cook it we up? Had a great. We had a great evening, man. Yeah, we were like up quartering these things to like two thirty in the morning and oh, oh god we we're fucking wasted by the time we finished that thing <laughs> and we're housed at like two thirty in the a.m cooking up um tenderloins Man. and uh I, I he posted in his story where he was like yeah you know field to table or whatever he posted it was super mm-hmm. it was super fun we had a good night it was it was like a very a very good bonding moment. It was like one of those times <laughs> you're like, this is team building right here. This is what this is all about. That's you know? awesome. Yeah. Had, he, the t- had, the, had the country music and the lights from the truck casting our, our, our light into the deer as we were quartering all of it into his, throwing it into the freezer. It was great. It was a great evening. That's awesome. Strong. He's, uh, he's surprisingly good. He's a good chef. Like uh, last time I was there, I had those access, ta- you made me some access tacos and they were delightful. Yeah. What's yeah. that called when you hang somebody and then you cut their belly open? Just gut? Yeah. Yeah, just a gut. That's it? There's, yeah. no, there's not a name for that? Yeah. Just, oh, you can use a Colombian you, you make, necktie as well. Well, like the cooking version of that, I think, splaying. I watched that, Ross. I watched that movie, uh, Outlaw King, Netflix original. Yeah. About Scotland. Yeah, they did that to a dude in that. Oh, uh, Jesus. Hung, hung him and then freaking cut him from like sternum down and just dropped everything. Huh. Nice. The killing yeah, scene in Bone Tomahawk really got me. What? Oh, God, oh yeah. that movie. That was Ugh. probably the most brutal, God, dang. I think, death scenes in a movie. I never Same. Saw it. You've Same. never seen Bone Tomahawk? Nope. Now, that's a good one. Dude, those chicks, as they're like walking out, I'm like, ugh. What's, what, what's Bone Tomahawk about? Is it a Western? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a Western. Kurt, uh, Russell. Kurt Russell. Russell. Okay. Huh. I've heard it was good. I, I just never had a chance. To it see is it's so good. good. I mean, I think it's pretty fucking good. <laughs> and there's no music in it. They didn't score it. Yeah, it's, like, it's just really weird. Like no country. Like like it's super like it's super stressful. Like the yeah. whole movie is really? fucking. Yeah, you're just wow. like, oh my god, this is awful. Wow. Yeah, it's about these cave dwelling like uh, inbreeders, Indians that are cannibals. Interesting. And they uh, they take a naked guy. And they hold him. He's alive. Alive. Talking to Kurt Russell. Yeah. yeah. And they hold him by the foot and they cut him in half. From the ass. From, from his. From, yeah. So they're like they're hacking, they're hacking down him. with yeah. this giant like. Yeah. Almost. It's a bone. Oh, it's, it's a made bone out of tomahawk. Bone. Yeah. yeah but that's where the name comes from. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah and they, they. So like the dude's still alive as they're like breaking Ripping his pelvis apart. and then br- and cut him clean in half. Oh, wow. That's yeah. legit. Yeah. 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 That's that is that is a that is a strong move. Yeah. yeah, and it shows it shows it all. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And the women they take and they they amputate their legs, their arms, mm-hmm. and stick bones in their eyes. So they're nothing but there for breeding. That's it. You yeah, but the, a person wouldn't live that long if they really did that. Yeah, you'd that's think. not that's not a thing. Well, you just have to watch the movie, right? I'll have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I think I think those women, yeah, they'd been alive for a while. They were in their like late twenties. How yeah. could you even peg an age on them? <laughs> what? I mean, you could kind of see it through the makeup. Well, as I mean, Jared's strong suit is age. It's not height, as we remember. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> previous. <laughs> previous well in the last yeah. episode you forgot your height jared so, so yeah. it's natural he's five foot amazing yeah it's exactly yeah. exactly mm-hmm. uh, hey by the way I, I wanted to give a shout out to an unknown drinking bro this was um i got a i got an awesome probably like one of the greatest christmas gifts i've ever received um sent to me but it was anonymous and it just said hey man i i i, I don't know if somebody was worried that i would send it back or whatever but um Jared, do you remember the episode we did where, where you and I went off on a maybe a forty five minute rant about jacking off on Buzz Aldrin? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got we were in I, Vegas. I got a framed autographed picture of Buzz Aldrin. That um, now you're gonna jack off on? It, 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 and it said, and all the notes said was this: "Hey, huge fan of the show. Uh, love you guys. Love everything. I know that it's probably impossible that you're you'll never get to jack off on Buzz Aldrin." But maybe you can jack off in this autographed picture of him. 
And it's it's literally from Buzz himself. It is. <laughs> oh my god! If if it was, I would die. It would be the best. But uh, the biggest troll movement uh, moment ever. Who, nobody so has funny. a nobody and then has, it has his number underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> I was, me. but I was talking about this. I was like, man, who has an, an autograph like Buzz Aldrin? Like, that's pretty rare. Um, and he's right. I probably would have sent it back. I, I would imagine that would be costly. Um, I've bought some autograph memorabilia for some people, and and some of the harder ones were. Uh, we looked at you and I, Jared, looked to get something from Matt that was Stevie Ray Vaughan. That was next to impossible. That was oh, what yeah. fucking eighteen thousand dollars or something crazy. He just didn't sign that. anything. I think the one that we found was like sixty four. Did he yeah. package a certificate of authenticity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all of it comes with that. Um, and then there was a, a one of my best. Oh, shit. Fr- yeah, w- one of my yeah. best friends He's buying won. it from a collector's agency. Oh, I was talking about Buzz. Oh, oh no, 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 dude, just trolled you. No, 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 no. The the Buzz thing was real. So it came with the the certificate and the whole thing, and it was framed. And it's. Oh I, shit! I'll take a picture and put it up on on the Instagram for Dringer Bros. It's gorgeous. Where you're like, oh shit, this is like a like a centerpiece over the mantle type thing. Where you're like, this is fucking amazing. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super nice. So it wasn't like a bullshit thing. Like it, 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 it came in like a like there wasn't a picture a picture from him on the moon and all that shit with it. Um, and Buzz had signed it. Like it's amazing. But <laughs> it was a picture of Neil Armstrong and Buzz signed. Buzz it. signed it and said, "Fuck you, dude. <laughs> I deserved it more than you did." God, that's so good. But I tried to buy over the weekend. Uh, a friend of mine, we we do this fantasy football shit, and his team has been injured and just keeps coming back and has stayed alive to somehow make it to the championship. And I said, dude, the the only thing that your team reminds me of is fucking Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Like, it just keeps going down, but just pops right back up to life. And so the bet was, <laughs> if if his fantasy football team won, I'd buy him an autographed Ruth Bader Ginsburg thing. And I didn't think it would be that hard. And then I started searching for that fucking thing. And her autographs go for like four grand. <gasps> oh, shit. No, RBG, no, luckily no. his team lost. And I didn't have to, to buy that thing. But um, man, I, I, there's two movies out about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. One just opened up this weekend. It's supposed to be up for the Oscars and all that shit. Um, and then a documentary about her. So I would have figured she would have been out and about signing a bunch of shit. She doesn't sign anything, apparently. So hmm. she was one of those people that was a hard signature to get, and that would have really rocked my balls for four. You seen the preview for this new movie, Vice President, or is that what it's called? Vice. It like came. Vice. It came out yesterday. It fucking bombs. Oh, with, with oh, Dick Cheney. Dick yeah. Cheney. Yeah. I mean, look, Christian Bale looks identical to him, and yeah. uh, and sounds like, uh, exactly like him. My my problem is this: one, there's a difference between what Hollywood wants to make that they think that everybody's talking about, which is politics, which normal people in America don't give a fuck. Two, can you name me any vice president movie that anyone would give a shit about in the history of the United States? Just one vice president. Has there ever been a cool vice president ever in Al the history Gore. of our country? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that's solid. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, LBJ, right? So I think that LBJ's already had several movies about he his did, life, and so not, none of them have done well. So with right. this Vice, with the Dick Cheney movie, it bombed. It opened up at like four million dollars. Um, mm-hmm. You know that was it's up for six Golden Globes. So when you get to that ceremony next month, great, congratulations! Your top movie that that you nominated everything for was four million dollars opening weekend. I just right. I think nobody gave a shit about that. Um, and, you know, look, all of this is, is spun by the media and all this other shit. Like, Trump went over to Iraq. Did you guys see this? Yeah. Is that normal for, like, that's, is that normal for presidents to do on Christmas? You guys would know better than me, obviously. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, is that a thing? I don't know. Where, what are you talking about? Trump went to Iraq. Trump went to Iraq for Christmas. Is that a, is that a normal oh, yeah. thing for, like, most sitting presidents to, to go overseas to see the troops? Was it a big thing? What? No, he didn't tell anybody. He, just he didn't tell anybody. Yeah. He just showed up. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, he'd, he'd taken some heat about not going over there yet. And then he shows up on Christmas and it was, you know, gave a speech and did the whole thing. And uh, I didn't know if that happened every year, to be honest with you. No, it doesn't happen every year. I don't think every president is gone. I think every president has gone over for some type of holiday, right? But he's damned if he do. He's, he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. So it doesn't really matter. I think that the media is going to devour anything that he does and they're going to spin it to, to reflect whatever version they want. And so he could be, you know, going to 
Calcutta to hand out fucking candy to kids and people would be like, yeah. well, he should have been in Calcutta fucking two years ago. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, look at that guy. <laughs> look at that guy doing all that stuff just for the publicity. Like, there, yeah. were, there were a bunch of people popping up in my feed that were doing those uh, on Christmas Day. I think Matt Frazier was, uh, was out there too. I don't know where he stopped in at. But. Mm. Yeah, I saw Sean White, yeah, was, Sean White was there too. Is yeah. it true that like Iraq is fucking flipping out now that he paid the visit to the guys? Yes. Telling, yeah, they oh, are. Because they, they, now they want, since troops, uh, Trump said he's going to move troops out of Syria, now Iraq says, great, we want troops out of Iraq and we want our fucking country back. Um, yeah, that, that really worked out for him the first time around. Is any of this going to work out, though? And, like, this is a question that we got. This was the question that we got the most all week. Evan, if, and if you could answer, it'd be great. Um, what did you think of James Mattis leaving? Ooh, Ugh. that's that's a that's a well, first of all, I think Mattis has so much respect across the board from, you know, the folks in the military, uh, you know, non-military folks. He's he's got such an incredible track record of service. And, it, and really, he's got an impeccable service record. So it's not only the fact that he served, but he's got a really impeccable service record. Uh, there's no question as to the type of intellect and experience that he has, because I think that it's unparalleled to 99.9% of everybody else in the world, if not more, right? Um, and then even within a cabinet, how could you question the amount of sp- experience and intelligence that I- experience and intelligence that man brings to the table. Um, you know, with everyone, there's going to be personality disputes, right? So you'll have to make decisions as uh, the chief executive. You'll have to make decisions, and not everybody in the cabinet is going to agree. So um, he resigned, I think, uh, rightfully so, because he obviously met a point with the, the chief executive where he disagreed so much that he had to resign. Now. The public, as far as the publicity around the resignation, whether or not that was looked at as part of, you know, hey, let me stick you in the eye a little bit before I do this. Who knows? Because it could just be a man that's trying to be as professional and dignified as he can by a resignation letter. And obviously, there are things within the resignation letter that would directly point at Trump and then making it public, whether or not he could see the second or third order effects of that, which I'm almost positive he could because he's James Mattis, right? So um, there's obviously a a significant uh, um, division between where he was on Syria and probably the Middle East and where the president was. So what do I think of it? I think that uh, the, the way that it was conducted I I don't know. I I would I would find it really hard to put myself into a position where I would armchair quarterback any decision that James Mattis would make. To be quite honest with you, because I mean, he's the most experienced in theater level and dual theater warfare in the entire world. Yeah, in, like in, you in, can't. <laughs> and that's and that's the that's the problem that I have with it is you know I'm obviously a fan. So yeah. uh, when I say I'm a fan of his work, I, I'm extremely grateful for the men like Mattis and their dedication to service and what they've done for the country is a lifetime of service and impeccable service record. Uh, he's, he's got an extreme amount of respect across the military, whether it's any service. So I would find it very difficult to challenge, uh, a decision that he would make saying it was wrong, uh, because I'm just not there. Right. So there has to be something going on within the, the, Oval Office that we're not privy to, where he felt that that was acceptable, and I'll probably err in the fact of saying that the man makes a lot of good decisions. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe maybe he right. was being handcuffed to not f- fully fulfill his plan, and he didn't want that to go down as his mm-hmm. legacy. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Well, that's I mean that's that's a, that's that's a, a whole point. other issue. Yeah. yeah. So, and out of all the generals, uh, as as we know, I think people have heard my interpretation and or feelings of generals and general officers, uh, not all of them are created equal. And I, I think that a lot of them, even though they have a, a incredible amount of dedication to service, uh, some of them have a lot of dedication to service to themselves. They're very, they're very selfish. 
they're very entitled and a lot of them have a significant amount of ego that directly contributes to uh, not only the success of the failures that we have overseas. And I think that I've seen so many examples of uh, bad leadership and there, there, there are an incredible amount of really great examples of great leadership. But uh, once you get to that point, politics becomes a significant issue that you have to learn how to navigate. And if you're not a good politician, because that's, a, that's basically what that position becomes, it affects your career. And politics and leadership, specifically w- within the military, there isn't room for it. There really isn't. It's, it's not a politically correct act. War is not something that you can, politicians should be, uh, when I say that, they, they have such an incredible amount of, of uh, for obvious reasons because of the way that we're designed, but they have such an incredible amount of influence of how war is fought, but they have such a lack of experience and their decision-making is so fundamentally flawed and a, a, a large scale of these these wars that we fight overseas there's such a disconnect from where the troop is on the ground level and where the decision making happens in Washington it's such a large divide that it causes so much confusion and and ultimately it leads to bad decision making and whether or not people are are making decisions uh where they feel are appropriate and ethical it's somewhat irrelevant because they're so disconnected and they're so self-absorbed in their own little political bubble of DC that it makes it almost impossible to make good decisions because they have, you know, corporate interests and political interests and all these different interests. But, you know, the interest that we should be concerned with is what's happening on the ground. How does this affect the soldier? The people. Yeah. yeah. How does this affect the soldier, sailor, airman, marine, whatever, right? And then how does this affect the people on the ground? And then what are the second and third order effects of what we're doing? It's war is so complex. And I think politicians have this ability, whether they know it or not, they try to distill these super complex issues down to very black and white. Like there's a white cowboy and there's a, there's a, there's a guy in a black cat, you know, black and white. And it's like, fuck man, there's a lot of gray over there. And when you have so many different self-serving people feeding from the trough, it makes it really hard to make fucking credible decisions that will save American lives and American taxpayer dollars and people that are living in these countries overseas and save them and make the right decisions. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my political well, military rant. For the day. Here's what the, the thing from, you know, obviously a non-military dude like myself, like when is the right time to get out of there? Because how long how long have we been over there, Evan? I mean, consecutively at this point, when is when is the right time right. to finally pull pull everybody out of there, or or will there just never but, be one? But the, the problem is, is we're directly responsible. When I say that, we're, we're we're ethically bound to the Middle East because we're ethically responsible to the region based on our our prior acts. So we invaded yeah. Iraq and it destabilized the entire region. We, when I say we, we're directly responsible for the post effect of that invasion, regardless of what we might think is right or wrong, or whether or not Korea, we have the stomach to fucking go go for it. Korea, Japan, Germany, and, and, we have and, we have presence and, there and, still today. And, but like, that's and that's my whole point. Yeah. Politicians are so nearsighted when they think of these things. Let's go invade Iraq. Yeah. Well, yeah, dummy. It sounds fucking great on paper, doesn't it? But. We're still in Iraq and we're still in Afghanistan. Afghanistan, we invaded in what? October of 2001 Mm -hmm. with a small force. It is what? December of 2018. And (laughs) this year we will have kids that were born on 9-11 that will be joining the military to deploy to Afghanistan, right? And we have already had that. It's 17 years old. So the second and third order and post effects of any invasion we're not thinking about what can happen. They're thinking about the short-term, near-term gain. And then ultimately, when we don't have the stomach to follow through or we run out of fucking money, well, that affects everybody. So we're ethically obligated, when I see this, to see the elimination, complete elimination of ISIS to see it through. Because ISIS didn't exist 
in 2003 when we invaded Iraq. It didn't exist. Yeah. We dismantled uh, Al-Qaeda's international network to a great degree. It's not completely gone. And ISIS flourished in the destabilized Middle East, not only the socioeconomic climate based on the invasion of Iraq. So what do we owe this? Well, we probably owe it more than just, well, fuck it, we're out of here, because we've done that so many times in the past uh, that I think that there is there 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 has to be a, a, a series of decisions that rightfully inform decision makers and what the actual cost of war looks like over decades, not just like, what's the cost of the, what's the bill over the, the next six months to overthrow this country? It's like, man, that's so fucking simplistic. And I, I, I wish people could think a little bit more deeper into these situations because my take on it is uh, the stabilized Middle East, um, it, it, we have not contributed to stabilizing the Middle East. That's for sure. And I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that spent my adult life, the majority of my adult life in Iraq. And I probably err on the side where Saddam was uh, an appropriate dictator to, uh, to, to rule over the country of Iraq. And because <clears throat> the other piece of that is he was greedy, power hungry individual. You, you know how to steer that guy. He's pretty, he's, <laughs> he's pretty, pretty easy to steer left and right. <laughs> you like power and you like money. Okay, here you go. When you, when you, when you start to deal in theocracies and you start to deal with extreme religions, that's when things get fucking hanky because now we can't control it with power and money. We've got to control it with like, oh shit, we got to have buy-in with and, it. Oh my yeah. God. It's, it's like a, it's, it's yeah. so fucking complex. Well, it, and I mean, rightfully so I'm skewed because of, uh, the amount of contribution that I've had. And, and when I say that, it's been limited compared to the amount of contribution that thousands of service members have, have had for this country. Uh, would I say that it's a mistake? I don't think the invasion of Iraq was necessarily a mistake. I think the way that we've invaded and then the post-occupation, uh, uh, the post-occupation handling of this has been just fucking boggled from the beginning of just one politician and corporate interest after another. And ultimately it's, it's led to this fact where we have a real problem with fundamental Islamic extremism. And we've, we've directly contributed when I say that destabilizing the Middle East, that's allowed that to grow. Now, do I think that we have to pay for the entire bill of the entire Middle East? Well, shit, I hope not. (laughs) <laughs> but um that's just my two cents i don't know that's well that's what it seems like and that's why i asked and you know like syria and all that other shit like how long is this going to keep going on i guess is my question or is it just yeah. endless at this point because it doesn't seem like we can ever really get the fuck out of there no I, I i think we will i mean i think the the sun is is due to burn out i think in 2.5 billion years and, <laughs> um eventually that's that's the that's the solution in the middle east the sun goes away and we got to hop off this rock <laughs> <laughs> well, problem solved dear. problem solved uh you want to get to the drinking bro of the week go for it uh drinking bro of the week is submitted by alexandria bolden she says i'd like to nominate my husband jared there we go there's another jared uh, Jared Bolden for Drinking Bro of the Week. Oh, he was baby. an infantryman in the Marines for just shy of eight years and did a tour in Afghanistan. We've been married for seven years. When Jared first got out of the Marines, he struggled. He felt like he lost his identity. He was missing brotherhood and a badass job being outside every day, and he just didn't feel like he had a purpose. Once he started listening to Drinking Bro's podcast, I saw such a positive change in him. He would frequently say, these guys are just like me. I don't feel like I'm alone uh, with my crude sense of humor and my thought process. It was a huge thing now, and, and he was really missing that in the civilian world. Jared has now overcome the dreaded transition out of the military and dedicates his time to helping fellow vets. Hey, Andrea, thanks for submitting that. Um, by the Cheers. way, Jared, you should never feel down about life when you have a smoking hot wife like this. A picture comes in, <laughs> a thumbnail, well, you, and uh, yeah, you should be you, really uh, grateful for life. Group, can you send that to the group text, please? Yeah, that is Alexandria <laughs> Bolden, and you can look her up. Um, <laughs> uh, J- Jared, you should never, ever contemplate anything than going home to your wife every single night. 
because she is a complete smoke show. Congratulations, Jared and Alexandria. Um. <laughs> if you have any uh, personal videos you want to send in. <laughs> I'm just saying, let's say you go to and- Alexandria's uh, Facebook page and you look at her in front of a Jeep Rubicon. I think that'll answer every question you ever needed to know about, about life. <laughs> <laughs> about life. Um. <laughs> Well, shit, this was awesome. Uh, Merry Christmas, guys. It's nice to be back on the fucking show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's kick it off. Yeah, uh, Jared, are you going to go into 2019 with a new girlfriend, yes or no? I I like that. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. New year, new you. New year, new me? Yeah. New El Camino. New El Camino, Camino. new new girlfriend, new rhino line in the back of that, river life. Is that what's going to happen, 2019? Hey, I just, I got to survive three, what, three days, four days? I think I could do it. No, but in 2019, what, what what's the future of Jared Taylor looking like? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. All right. I don't know at all. Look, next week we'll do a, a 2019 episode where we look back at all of 2018, ups, downs, highs, lows, all of that shit. I like it. Let's do it. Richard Ryan's always going to be a low uh, every single year. That's not, <laughs> that's, that's not going to get better. But uh, the rest of us will go through what we hope to accomplish for 2019 and where we're at. Uh, for Jared Taylor, Evan Hafer, Richard Ryan, I'm Ross Patterson. Good night, everyone. Good night.